You're listening to 15 Minutes, where we feature community leaders sharing what the rest of us should know but likely don't. Hi, Chad Franzen here, one of the hosts of Share Your Voice, where we talk with top-notch law firms and lawyers about what it takes to grow a successful law practice. This episode is brought to you by Gladiator Law Marketing, delivering tailor-made services to help you accomplish your objectives and maximize your growth potential. To have a successful marketing campaign and make sure you're getting the best ROI, your firm needs to have a better website and better content. Gladiator Law Marketing uses artificial intelligence, machine learning, and decades of experience to outperform the competition. To learn more, go to gladiatorlawmarketing.com where you can schedule a free marketing consultation. Ken Hoffman is an award-winning plaintiff's personal injury attorney focused on automobile and trucking accidents, medical malpractice, and wrongful death litigation. With over 25 years of experience, he is a founding partner of the Chicago-based firm Mitchell Hoffman & Wolf LLC, where he has dedicated his career to client advocacy. Ken, thanks so much for joining me today. How are you? Good. Happy to be here. Yeah, thanks so much. Hey, uh, tell me, how did you get started in the legal industry? Well, it started back when I was a uh, college student, and I uh, worked with one of my father's friends in the uh, summers. It was basically a gopher running to and from um, court and other offices making deliveries. I really enjoyed the experience. And then I went to law school following college and then got involved in personal injury work shortly after graduation. Where did you go to law school? Went to law school at Washington University down in St. Louis. How did you enjoy that? It was a really good experience. Met my wife down there, so it worked out pretty well for me. Very good, very good. How uh, did you know that you wanted to be a, an attorney prior to that summer job? How did you? How and when did you know that that was what you wanted to do? Um, well, I always loved history. I always loved political science. And going back to junior high school, I loved when we had to study for the Constitution exam. So this have always intrigued me. So it definitely was something always piqued my interest and. Uh, College continued on that same path, and then law school was a natural uh, progression from there. Were you always like a good uh, debater or something like that? Uh, my wife would say yes. My father would probably say the same as well. Uh, but yeah, I always enjoyed the uh, back and forth of discussing issues and topics. And uh, like I said, always enjoyed the political science history aspect of school, and law was a uh, natural follow up to all that. Uh, after you finished law school at Washington, um, what were the early days of your career like? Well, my first job out of school was actually doing defense work in personal injury cases for a firm here in Chicago. And I was really lucky to get some really good experience working there. Uh, my partners who I was working below uh, gave me a lot of uh, responsibility early on in terms of court appearances and taking depositions. So it was a really great experience working there. And then uh, after about two or three years, I was offered a position to work for a uh, well-known plaintiff's personal injury firm here in Chicago. And after three years doing defense work, I jumped over the fence, so to speak, and started doing plaintiff's work in uh, the summer of 1994. From an attorney's perspective, is there a big difference in um, your passion for defense work compared to plaintiff's work, or is it just a different mindset that you have to have going into it? Just different mindsets entirely. Um, Obviously, on the defense side, you're working uh, by the hour for insurance companies or corporations. And on the plaintiff side, it's a contingent fee-based practice where your clients are always individuals and families. So uh, oftentimes, your clients in a personal injury case, you're the first lawyer they've ever had in their life who works for them. And they're less sophisticated, generally speaking, about how an attorney-client situation works. While on the defense side, for those few years I was doing that work, the clients are all as I said, insurance companies and corporations, and they are used to dealing with lawyers and uh, lawsuits and things of that type. So now you are an award-winning plaintiff's personal injury attorney. How, uh, how did you know it was time to uh, start your own firm when you did? Well, after working at that other plaintiff's firm here in Chicago for three or four years, uh, me and my two current partners, Paul Wolf and Jay Mitchell, uh, we lunch together pretty much every day as the associates at this firm, and we decided that it was time to. Uh, do this for ourselves. We were uh, doing a lot of work for this firm, doing a good job for them. And obviously uh, we weren't receiving a lion's share of the profits. So we, in a very amicable way, approached that firm and said we were gonna leave. And that was exactly 25 years ago uh, this month. So March of 98, we started Mitchell Hoffman and Wolf here in Chicago. We've been together ever since. 
what have what were some of the biggest differences between having your own firm and then you know practicing law for somebody else's firm? Well, the first thing is you have to find your own business. You work for someone else, it's their responsibility, generally speaking, to find the cases and then for you to work on the cases. When you are your own boss and your name's on the door, you have both responsibilities. You have to make sure you're bringing in new cases on a regular basis and do a good job on the cases you bring in. And for the most part, we work on fairly sizable personal injury cases. So they're not auto accidents that involve chiropractor treatment or bumps and bruises. There are fairly significant automobile and trucking cases with serious injuries, including wrongful death. So it's you have to balance out both the business development end of this and the uh, lawyer part of it best you can. Was that a uh, a big adjustment or were you guys kind of prepared for that, kind of knowing what you were getting yourselves into? I think we knew that was going to be part of the job. I think as time went on, we realized that the business development end of the practice was more important or equally important as doing a good job on the files because you can be a really, really great lawyer, but if you don't have any cases to work on, your skills are going to go to waste. So it's an equal balance between those two things. And anyone who starts their own practice has to realize that you have to spend equal amount of time on the development of business and new clients as you do on the files themselves. Is that something you've come to enjoy then? Say that again. I'm sorry, I missed the question. Is, is that the bills, uh, business development part something that you came to enjoy or was that something that you, uh, you, know, you just knew had to be done? Uh, I actually really enjoy it. Um, I enjoy getting out and meeting uh, new clients, new referring lawyers, whether it's going to uh, ball games with people, having lunch, playing around to golf. I really enjoy the uh, you know, meeting of new people, developing new resources uh, for client development. How did you guys go about getting your first few clients? Well, I think our cases come from three separate uh, buckets. We have friends and family who send us cases. We have um, old clients who send us cases. And we have a fair number of referring attorneys, uh, whether they're attorneys that do smaller personal injury cases or attorneys who may practice in an unrelated field like divorce or real estate. They may have a client call them up who has personal injury need. And they refer us the cases to work on. What do you most enjoy about um, being a plaintiff's personal injury attorney? I always enjoy the sense that we are helping an individual and a family in a time of need. Quite often, people come to us after a pretty devastating event has taken place to them. And as I mentioned earlier, we're often the first lawyer they've had on their side. Their prior experiences with attorneys have been maybe a prosecutor in a traffic situation or maybe a real estate situation with a, a bank. But when they hear that we work for them and that we are their attorney, the certain sense of relief that they have on their face and satisfaction that for the first time in their life, someone's going to be having their back and working for them. I really enjoy that aspect of it. What's kind of your, what's kind of the objective? I'm sure most attorneys um, know the answer to this already. I just don't. What's kind of the objective of a personal injury attorney? Who are you kind of like, for the lack of a better word, kind of going after? Well, we're going after anybody. What we are doing is when people come to us after a serious personal injury uh, accident, car accident, work accident, medical malpractice, we're trying to make them whole. I mean, the civil justice system in the United States allows for people who have been injured in a trucking accident or a car accident, for example, to be made whole for the lost wages, the lost medical expenses, and then beyond that, to receive compensation for pain, suffering, disability, the loss of a normal life, or disfigurement. So I don't view it that we're going after anyone. I view it as that we're trying to get compensation for our clients who've had things taken away from them by the negligence of others. Uh, as you look back over the years, what have been um, either some of the biggest turning points in your firm or maybe big milestones that you're proud of? I think the uh, biggest milestone early on in the firm was um, we started the firm in 1998 and we were doing pretty well early on. But back in 2002, um, I, along with my partner, Jay Mitchell, we tried a medical malpractice case against uh, Cook County Hospital, which is a big public hospital here in the Chicago area. And it was a medical malpractice case involved in the death of a mother following childbirth. And the death was caused by the failure of the medical providers to not 
recognized that the woman was suffering from a pretty well-known complication of pregnancy called preeclampsia, which if it had been timely recognized would have most certainly prevented her death. They did not recognize that she was developing preeclampsia and uh, following childbirth, uh, she died of a massive cerebral hemorrhage. And we tried that case and the county hospital offered us $250,000 before trial to settle the case, which we turned down. She was a mother of uh, three small children at the time and had a husband. And we tried the case and obtained a verdict for just under $10 million. And I think that really put us on the map, both as a uh, firm that was could get good results and also that we could try a case. It's hard to get good results on personal injury cases unless the insurance companies know you're willing to take a case to trial. You're not going to sell for short money. So that was really a big turning point for us. And that was in the summer of 2002. And since that point, we've had a number of great successes for our clients. What do you think are the keys to, to, to being successful in uh, cases like that? Preparation is the biggest thing you have to spend on. You can't just show up at trial. Uh, early on in that case, I had a sense it was going to go to trial. And from maybe the first deposition forward, everything we did was geared towards getting ready for trial. You can't work on a case hoping it's going to settle and all of a sudden realize midway through or after that, that, oh, God, I have to try this case. I better get ready. So from the very beginning, every deposition we took, every witness we met with, every expert we talked to was always directed towards getting ready for trial. Have you known that that, that preparation is basically the key throughout the, through, through the duration of your career, even in, uh, in your first few cases? Correct. Preparation is always the key to success. Uh, what, um, has there been, uh, during the course of running your own firm, has there been maybe a mistake that you guys have, uh, learned a lot from, you know, ended up being a great learning experience? Well, I don't think of them as mistakes. I think of them as learning experiences, mm -hmm. like you mentioned. I think that the biggest mistake anyone can make, if you're to call it a mistake, is not trying to get better. I think this technology has, uh, changed over the years. And certainly with the uh, pandemic bringing uh, video more into uh, practice, if you're not trying to get better with the newest developments in trial practice and technology and the case law, you're going to fall behind. So I think any time that we realize that we're falling maybe a step behind on the technology side or any other area, we always quickly try to correct that and make sure we're staying ahead of the curve as opposed to falling behind the curve in those respects. Have you had a uh, a mentor or mentors over the course of your career? And if so, what is their uh, best piece of advice for you? Well, I'll go back to my father's friend, uh, a man named Marty Corey, who I worked for back in the summers when I was in college. And he was a real estate corporate lawyer. But what I always saw about Marty was he was prepared and he worked hard for his clients. And I remember that uh, back when I was a 21-year-old college kid, you know, running errands for him at that time. So preparation was always a great thing. Um, so that was the first thing. And then I think after that, I was lucky to work for a guy named uh, Bob Reifenberg at uh, my first firm, which is uh, called Clawson Miller here in Chicago. And it was on the defense side. And Bob also just made sure that you never misrepresented anything and you always stuck to the facts. And I think preparation and being honest and above board never uh, will never fail you. I have one more question for you, but first, tell me more how people can learn. Uh, tell me how people can learn more about uh, MHW Law. Well, Mitchell Hoffman and Walsh is a Chicago-based personal injury firm. You can go to our website, which is mhw.law or mitchellhoffmanandwolf.com. You can read about uh, my background, the background of all the attorneys who work here, and also uh, some synopsis of cases that we've had great success with on the website. Last question for you. In your first ever, in your in the first trial that you ever worked, were you uh, what, what was your what were your kind of emotions or feelings going into it? Were you were you nervous uh, facing maybe a more seasoned attorney, or were you always confident in your preparation because you knew that was most important? The answer is both. Uh, I've never lacked confidence in my abilities to do things, but certainly when you're doing something for the very first time, you're nervous because you uh, don't know what to expect, and you also know what could go wrong. And that carries on even to this day. I think even if we're having trying cases for 30 plus years now, you are nervous before every trial starts because again, you are nervous about what you know could happen or can't happen for your client. And that nervousness, like, like playing a, a ball game or a sport, is um 
important to being ready and being prepared for any uh, possible uh, circumstance. Uh, just the la last question, kind of a follow up to that question. Uh, so I'm guessing, you know, once the trial starts to get going and you're, you know, you've gotten a few, the first few anxious moments out of the way, it's kind of just natural and you're doing your thing and the nerves die down. Well, right. Again, if you're well prepared for trial, um, you're giving an opening statement, for example, you should know the case backwards and forwards where you're just telling the story to the jury the same way you'd be telling to your friends and family over dinner. That's something I try to do when I'm getting ready for trial. I won't necessarily rehearse an opening statement, but I'll try to continually talk about the case with my wife or friends until I realize they can understand what I'm trying to explain and try to prove. Because they are, in essence, a potential juror. So just being yourself, being natural, is always a great key to success when you're trying cases in front of juries. Okay, great. Hey, uh, Ken, it's been great to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time and all of your thoughts today. All right, thank you for your time also, Chad. So long, everybody. Thanks for listening to 15 Minutes. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time.